and welcome back to another episode of Anyone Can Paint. Today should be our final episode for the Tawas Point Lighthouse. Um, if you recall, last week we got the lighthouse finished, we've got the foliage in, now we're just going to work in the foreground area. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and start putting highlights in our uh, large tree that's on the left hand side. So you're going to use a large flat bristle brush, just go into some pure yellow, and maybe a touch of green if you want since I just touched some green. <laughs> and you want to again load your brush by just lightly tapping your brush into that. And the reason you do that is so you can get an even distribution of paint on the end of your bristles so you don't have one area that may be thick and globby. Plus you'll notice that it'll open your bristles up a little bit. Remember that our light's coming in from the left hand side so you want to focus on putting more, a little bit more highlights on the left hand side. And this is done by just lightly tapping and keeping your brush moving and don't cover up all your dark. And the parts that you don't highlight, like back in here, those areas, those will appear to be back and in, inside and on the back side of the tree, kind of helping that look a little three-dimensionalized. So that's why it's important to keep that dark in there. That needs to be a part of that. And let's put a little bit, I'm going to wipe some of this paint out. Let's put a little bit on that bush that's way back there. Remember that one sits way back. So you don't want this to be really bright, which we need to put a little bit of stuff to it. That's going to be back in the distance. So just give a little indication. I'm just going to get a little bit more. Again, don't cover up all your dark. There. All right, while we still got that brush, let's, uh, well, in fact, let's go ahead and clean that out. We need to put a little bit of a path in that kind of goes from the foreground area that leads back up towards the lighthouse. We're going to use our flat or a small flat bristle brush. This is going to be brown and just a little bit of blue to it, just to darken it up a bit. And this is just going to let me add a little white so you can see it. You probably can't see it very well. There we go. Again, this just kind of works its way back towards the lighthouse. You want that to taper and narrow up as you get further back in the painting. That's why it kind of helps to lead your eye back there. So the widest part of your path is at the bottom of your canvas. And you want to make horizontal strokes as you're doing this. Again, that helps to lead your eye back in. And we'll just leave it like that. And we'll put some highlights on that in a bit. Clean your brush out. Now I want to hit this grass area back here a little bit brighter so it stands out more. So I'm just going to go into some pure yellow. And just make this a little bit brighter. Again, don't cover up all your dark. And we're doing that on both sides of the path. There. Without cleaning your brush, you can go right into some blue, a little bit of green. Now we need to put a little foliage that's up here, kind of around the base of that tree. And this is done 
by just going in and bending your bristles kind of like that. Now you still want to be able to see the grass that's behind there. And then we're just going to block this in and bring that right up to the path. And again, we'll put highlights on that a little bit. Then do basically the same thing over on this side. Bend your bristles. And work that back over towards the path. And this you can just kind of fill this part in. That brush out next we're going to do is get our small fan brush and then we're going to go through and put some highlights in here now remember that this whole area is not going to get highlighted because you do have shadows that are being cast by the tree so our highlights are going to go up in the front area we're going to leave this section in here dark same with over here then we'll brighten up some of this area in here so this is going to be done with some, get your brush wet. This is going to be done with some pure yellow. Remember that yellow, I know that yellow is kind of scary when you look at it on your palette because you see a pile of it and it stays really bright. But the thing you've got to remember, I just had a discussion with this with, some, with a class on uh, last week, is that even though it's scary to look at, when you put it on, you're not putting it on very thick. And it's a very transparent color, which means it allows your underpainting to really show through. So it's not as scary as what it looks like. <clears throat> so at the base of your tree, you're going to just lightly touch this, and we're going to put in the indication of some grasses. Now remember, we've got to leave an area that's dark from the shadows. So just kind of touch this, bend your brush a little bit, and work that right down to the path, and leave a little bit of dark in there. And we're going to hop across the path and do the same thing. Again, you want to leave some dark. And I'm just slightly bending the bristles of the brush. And you can clean that out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of highlighting on the path. <clears throat> Keep in mind, as you're doing this, whenever you have light on both sides of your path, that area has to be highlighted too because you, you can't have light then there's no light then there's light again however back here where you have dark and dark that area needs to stay dark then consequently behind that we have light again so this is that thing we talk about all the time is contrast we always have a light against the dark and every time that you can produce that that tricks the eye to think that there's a lot of distance there so because this is lighter back here we're going to lighten up this path up to the point to where we run into the darks then we're not going to do that part and then we're going to pick that back up where the light is we'll go back in and shadow highlight that area after we've highlighted both of the front areas so this is going to be some white and a little bit of burnt sienna and this is done by just coming through And putting this on, you don't cover up all the dark again. 
And again, you work this right back to about this area right here. And you want these strokes to be basically horizontal because paths generally will lie pretty flat. Not always, but generally. I'm going to reload. Then we're going to get this area back here. So back here where it's thinner, just give a little indication of that and just work our way down the path. So it gets to the point that you want to determine where the dark is. So because these are bushes, it doesn't mean that at that point it's all dark. It could be that much. It's however you want to interpret that. But you definitely want to allow yourself an area where it's darker. Something maybe like that. Now with that color still, you want to add some blue. And I grab way too much. So how this should really work is you've got the white, the blue, and the brown. But you want to have enough blue in it where it kind of gets it to a bluish gray color. And then this is going to go on the shadow part of your path. I'm going to put a little bit more blue in that. There we go. And we can clean that one out. Now with that same brush, I'm going to make um, uh, some white and a little bit of burnt sienna. And we need to highlight some of our tree trunks and branches that we can see. So just go ahead and make that up. And then we're going to switch to our liner brush. And you want to add some water to that mixture. So we kind of thin it down. And then we need to put some highlights in this tree over here, maybe some of the branches, and we certainly need to do some over here too. Remember that our light's coming in from the left, so you want to work on the left-hand side of your trees. And you really only want to put this where you can see it. So if you have some trunks or branches that are sticking out between, like right here, there's a gap between and there's a gap here, that's where you want to hit a little bit of highlight on those. But the areas that are covered with leaves, you don't want to hit that. And this is catching a little bit of light, so you also want to do a little bit in this one. And then over on this side. We don't have a lot of highlight down here where the trunk is, but we do have... Uh, some branches that are exposed between the light here, so you want to give a little indication of those. And these are just kind of playing peekaboo through here, so you don't want to you don't want to take that and go all the way down because then you're cutting off the leaves. Just kind of little indications here and there. And this will really make your tree three-dimensionalized. And you can clean that out. I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some... I want to put a little bit of bushes and things along the bottom edge of that, uh, of that building that's there. This is some blue and green. And you're just going to come in and just tap some shapes. And just bring it right to that corner. And 
and clean out your brush. And we'll put a little bit of highlight on that by just grabbing some yellow again. Now that's still wet. So as you put this yellow on, it's not going to stay anything close to yellow. Light taps. Remember, this is further back. And you want to do this on the left-hand side. Just little indications. I'm just going to reload. And this is further back. You don't want a lot of detail here. I'm going to throw just a little bit more bright back here. There we go. And we'll clean that out. Now another thing we can put up in the sky are some birds. Now this is a great painting for that. I'm just going to mix up some blue and a little bit of brown. You just want a dark color. And again your liner brush and you want to get your paint really wet again. And we're going to come up and just kind of suggest some birds. And definitely get some in front of your clouds. That kind of really helps to push those back. Some over here. Also, I got this color. I'm gonna straighten this edge up a little bit. And I think I want to make that roof a little bit brighter also. I think we had talked about that in our first episode that we may want to go back and kind of brighten that up a bit. So I'm just going to grab some red. And maybe just a touch of white. Just not, not a whole lot, but just enough. It's going to brighten it up. There we go. Remember, white is a, is a pretty tricky color to work with sometimes because... If you use a small amount of it, it will enhance the color that you're using it with. But if you use too much white, it dilutes it. And red's a perfect example of that. And you see how when I first put it on there, you know, the red was not as bright as it is right now. But if you put too much white in it, then it turns to a pink. And I really didn't want to get a pink roof on this. While I've got some red on my brush, I'm also going to get some blue. And I want to put a little bit of a, a shadow overhang from the roof on the front. So I'm just getting this color to a chiseled edge. And I want to go right underneath the roof line so you can see a separation between the side of the house and the roof. I'm also going to do the same thing over here. Just right along the roof line. And you can clean your brush out. 
Now one of the things you can do also with this color is you can make that indication of some bricks because this house is, is made out of brick. So you want to use the chiseled edge and once in a while just give some horizontal strokes here and there. my finger I'm just going through and softening those up so they're not as distinct you can see them but they're just not right in your face and then I'm going to make a few vertical ones Just kind of here and there. And even though we're not painting in every single brick, this is the traditional classic way of making your eye tricked to thinking that it's brick. Watercolor artists use this all the time. Again, you're not painting every single brick. You're just going to trick the eye to see the outside shapes of those. Just like that. You can kind of see how it gives you that impression. You probably put a little bit of highlighting on the uh, chimney. This again is going to be a little bit of white, a little bit of brown. And we're just using the flat, uh, the small flat bristle brush. like that then we need to put a cast shadow from this from the uh, chimney this is going to be some blue right into that uh, little bit of brown in fact we can also put a little bit of red in that too but it's mostly blue just wipe off the excess and this will just come straight out like this just to give a little indication of that chimney now the length of the shadow that you want to make it is totally up to you because that um, shadow would change based on the angle of the Sun so the higher the Sun is the shorter that shadow is going to be casted so as the Sun starts to sink shadows will get longer so you want to be kind of consistent with what you've got. So um, I'm, I'm going to assume that the sun's about on this angle because you can see the angle that we cast from there. It would be the same angle as that. So just kind of be consistent and just kind of keep your eye out for that. Um, we've got a few minutes. Let's do some things that are in the shadow. Um, we should probably throw a little bit of shadow on that tree trunk that's over there. This is just some a little bit of white, some blue, and a little bit of brown. And this is going to go right on the left-hand side of that tree trunk, just to give an indication that there's actually something there that's holding up that tree. And it goes just like that. A little bit there. And we can also use this color. You want to just kind of put in a little bit of indication of some weed shapes in there and here. Just a little bit. Just so it's not a flat color. And again, I'm just bending my bristles to get that weed 
look. Now it's just a thing of going through and seeing if there's anything that you've missed. I think I probably could put a little bit more highlighting. I'm just going to grab some white, a little bit of brown. On that, the small little trees that are over on the right hand side. Right in here. That's better. Then you can see it up against the, the lighthouse a little bit better. Alrighty, and that's, uh, that's it for the Tawas Point Lighthouse. I hope you get a chance to try this. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's something totally different obviously. But thank you so much for watching.